church. Good morning, everyone. We're going to spend some time just worshipping God. Can I so welcome you guys to just you know, join us this morning? to him and bless his name for the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endure to all generations will you raise your voice and raise your hands to the Lord and worship him this morning and say Lord Jesus I thank you Lord Jesus I thank you for your grace you are entering into the presence of the Lord with thanksgiving you are entering into his, into his presence with praise now raise your praise to the Lord Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you from the depth of your heart. Thank him for the gift of life. Thank him for his goodness. Thank him for the grace upon your life. Say, thank you, Jesus, wherever you are, where you are sitting or you are standing. Bless the name of the Lord. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. We are still worshipping. We are still worshipping. Give thanks to the Lord. That's what the Bible says. Jesus, we thank you for your spirit, for the outpouring of your spirit. Today is a very wonderful day. We had the rain and now everywhere is cold and so the spirit of God is pouring upon us. The Bible says, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Let's thank him for the gift of the Holy Spirit upon every life. Let's thank him for the freedom. The Bible says, where the spirit of God is, there is joy. Let's thank him for the everlasting joy. Let's thank him for the everlasting grace. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the outpouring of your spirit. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the healing. Thank you for the healing in your bones.
We take that song one more time. One more time. Let's sing the song. Again. Jesus, we have entered your presence with a clean heart. We have entered your presence with thanksgiving. And you say, where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there. And Lord, we know you are here. And Lord, as we begin to worship you, be glorified in our praises. Be glorified in our worship. And touch every life, touch every soul. Bless every one of us here. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Amen. Amen. I'll pass the time now to our worship leader. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. You know, today, what blessed day we have. We have one more hour of sleep. You know, thank you, God, for that, you know. So let's just all, you know, welcome you to just praise God in this day. You know, I welcome you to come to the front. You know, kids, you're here. Join us. You know, raising your feet. You know, let's just make sure that we keep our eyes on Jesus this morning. Jesus. 
let it ring through our audio praising. Let all men know that Jesus Christ, He is alive.
this week, there's so many things that's happened. I don't know about you, but I, I question God. I ask God, why so much things happen? You know, we see the earthquake happening, the shakening of the earth. And I go, God, I need to keep my eyes on you. There's no other way but to praise you. There's no other way. You know, we can keep turning around looking for solutions. But He's the same. He's the same yesterday, today, tomorrow. He's the only thing that actually stays the same. You know, even as we sing a next song, I just encourage you to not make today the same as every other Sunday. You know, we can't turn back time. So even if it's just, you know, putting your hands up, you know, whether to sing the song, you just do something different today. I encourage you to do something different. So you look back, you go, God, I know, I know it's you. Because I would have not done that.
have a message to encourage us this morning. As we're worshipping God, I, I saw an image of, uh, you know, when you play dominoes, that the, those little tiles that you stand up, and once you, you, you cause one to fall, it will just continue to fall, and, and, and it just continues until every tiles are, are, are fall, have fall, fallen down. And I feel like God spoke to me these words, circuit breaker, circuit breaker. Sometimes things happen like the middle of the tower, either it go a bit too far apart, it didn't touch the other one, and then it stopped the whole motion. And I felt that like God is saying to some of us, maybe you feel like your life is like that, that domino effect of disaster after disaster, bad things after bad things, and you have no power or control to let the remaining to stop. And sometimes our life is like that, broken pieces upon broken pieces. But I felt that Jesus came and He's like a circuit breaker. He, he, he died on a cross and He talks about empty tomb. It's like He took away that one towel in the middle and stopped the whole domino effect of all remaining towels to fall, to fall down. And He came to identify with us, to understand our struggle. In Hebrews chapter 4, Verse 14, it says, Since then we have a great high priest who have passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast, hold, our, hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who, is a, but one who in every aspect and respect have been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, brothers and sisters and friends, be encouraged that let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I just said, I just sense that God really want to encourage some of us here that Jesus came, He stopped, He changed our lives so that we don't have to keep on falling. But there's a, He almost like a circuit breaker that break, that change reaction that perhaps started through Adam, that sin entered into mankind. You just feel like there's something that's beyond your control. But this Jesus came on the earth, experienced like what we, what we experienced, the brokenness of the world, but yet without sin. He took that, He changed the destiny of mankind. He can change yours too today. As we're worshipping God,
call upon your name. We call upon the name of the Lord and to declare that we belong to Him. Now, this morning we'll do something very quickly. We haven't done this before, and we are very grateful to the Lord for having uh, two, three generations here. We have the children, we have the daddy and the mommies, and then we have the grandparents. blessings upon them. The Bible says children are God's heritage and Lord, these ones are your heritage. In every society we find that children or the young adults are the future of that society. If a society is going to collapse, then the children and the young adult will be wayward. But this is, these are our children, oh Lord, we lift them up to you. We bless them in your name. The Bible says he will pour his spirit upon all flesh. And our children will receive the Spirit of the Lord. Can we speak the Spirit of God into these children? The Bible says Jesus continued to grow in wisdom and in stature. And Lord, let's declare wisdom of, of the Lord upon these children. Lord Jesus, we lift our children to you. These are yours. These are your precious gift to us. Lord, we just ask for more wisdom as they grow. Even as they walk where, where we are not, your spirit is with them. These ones will not be taken away by the storm ravaging the world at the moment. Your spirit will reside within them. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the answered prayer. In Jesus' name, we have all worship. Amen. Let's have a seat in God's presence. Let's have a seat in God's presence. And put your hands together for the Lord Jesus. We have come to the time of the Holy Communion, and I hope everyone has this element. If you have it, raise it up. Okay, seems uh, some of us don't still have it. The ushers are walking around to pass it to you. So before we have this Holy Communion, I'd like to share something from the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. It says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and the labor of love which you have shown to us his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. As we are gathered here today to share uh, one thing that unites us, the blood and the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are all united in the love of Christ, I would like us to uh, put this verse into our hearts 
Um, and this has to do with each and every one of us, what we are doing in God's presence. How are you serving the Lord? It says here that God is faithful. He never forgets. Whatever you do, whether you are singing or you are preaching or you are giving people big smiley welcome, it does not forget. I'd like to share a story that my daddy told me, and uh, this happened uh, like 50 years ago. By the way, I spoke to my daddy yesterday. He's looking very well, very old, but very well. And uh, one of the things he said to me is that, Joseph, I hope you have not forgotten prayers. I said, no, I never forget. I never forget. So he told us this story many, many years ago. I was, I was a teenager, and uh, not just to me, but to the church members. And so this happened at one of the places he was ministering. So there's this big church, very big church. And with a big church comes a big pastor. So this, this big pastor who has the anointing to minister to 2,000 people at the same time. So he, he owns this very big church and very, he's a very busy man of God. So people come to him and then he prays for them. There are problems will disappear. So in, in any of his crusades, there are miracles that happen. And so this man of God continued to work and he was planting churches in the southern western part of Nigeria. And so one day during one of the ministration, the Lord prompted somebody among the congregation to come forward. And so what, what the Lord told this person to speak to the congregation is that people pray. There is one of the foundation of this church that will be brought down. So and uh, everybody was, uh, was sober when the word came out. So people started praying. And so people started praying that well, the only pillar of this church is our senior pastor, is our pastor. And so people started praying. And so people were praying and uh, they spent three days praying about it. And so that, so that went, went, went away. And uh, three months, I think six months after, terrible things started happening in the church. So, uh, prayers stopped being answered. A lot of people were complaining about the pastor. The pastor went through scandals. And so, this went on for like a month. And then he came. Whatever you are doing for God is not small. God sees everything that you are doing. You don't have to come here to hold the mic. But whatever you are doing, you can be as very tiny as giving big smile to someone who is frustrated in the church. And the joy of the Lord flows through that. The Lord is impressed. And as we take the Holy Communion, we want to pray and say, the Lord will remember all our sacrifices. And so let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word that does not forget the sacrifices of your people. And as we take this communion together, that we ask, oh Lord, that our worship and every act that we do in your name be acceptable before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to join me.
Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Joseph, and I'm your host. And to those of you online, welcome to church. It's nice to see everyone. Now give yourself a big round of applause. And look at the person next to you. Say, welcome to church. Tell them Jesus loves them. Jesus loves you. Tell them that. We have come to the time of testimony. Is there anyone who wants to share what God has done in their life? To So there are a lot of things that we can do uh, when we perfectly trust God. God works mightily in our lives and in our families and in our children. Asia has personally ministered to me, and this is what the Lord is really doing among our children. The world has a different agenda. God has his own, uh, own agenda. And so let's keep trusting God for what God is doing and what he will do. Amen. So we've come to the time of uh, tithe and offering. Yes, so uh, we will continue to give to us uh, God's projects until it comes. So uh, we have a QR code here that can be scanned. So let's just, just pray for that. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the grace to be able to give to us your work. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you bless our offering and you accept us as you accept the offering of Abel. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So we have people that are worshipping with us for the first time. In Nigeria, we have a song that we sing. If anyone is coming for the first time, we say, You are welcome in the name of the Lord. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. Uh, I don't know the rest. <laughs> right, we have Philip here. Philip, God bless you, Philip. And now we have we have Jacob. Jacob, where are you? God bless you, Jacob. Thanks for coming. Now I would like to invite the whole church to rise. Welcome the second time. Out. Let's welcome one another and welcome Jacob and Philip.
welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome. We have two announcements here. We have two announcements. The first one is that our worship night is back. The worship night, are you excited about that? Yes. The worship night is back. And so this is the worship and, and the worship and the prayer team are organizing a worship night on Saturday, the 20th of April from 6.30 to 9 p.m. So you're, you're all invited to come to join. You know something about worship is that God is present every time His own people are willing to worship. Worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. When those three, when there are three nations surrounding Israel and Jehoshaphat didn't know what to do. And the Lord said, you don't need to fight. Go get me choirs. Let them sing. And the Lord rose like he used to do in the past. Have you ever seen the Lord fight for you before? I have witnessed that in my life. The Lord fights. Every battle you have, the, when you come to the presence of the Lord in worship, it takes all those things away. So please endeavor to join on Saturday, 20th of April, as we pray and seek the face of the Lord together. If you'd like to get more information, please reach out to Pastor Matt and Pastor Jane, sorry, Jane where she's going to be a pastor someday. So reach out, reach out to Jane and uh, Pastor Matt. The second announcement is uh, the day after is our family Sunday. We'll be having a family Sunday on the 21st of April and the display on the board where all the four centers will gather together here at 10 a.m. Our children will be here and uh, we have the privilege of worshiping with them like we, ha we have today and the previous Sunday. So on this Sunday, we, we bless God that Pastor Simon will be joining us, one of our elders uh, in the Hope International Ministry. So he'll be joining us and he'll be our guest speaker. So we are all encouraged to bring dish to share for the fellowship lunch after service. So those are the two announcements that we have. Uh, without wasting time, we have come to the time that we are waiting for. This is the moment we are waiting for. God is ready to speak. Who is ready to hear the word of God? If you are ready to hear the word of God, wave your hand to the Lord. Yes, yes, I can see we are all ready. The Lord has prepared his anointed servant. Now, without much ado, I'd like to invite Pastor Friday to the stage to speak the word of the Lord to the Holy Spirit. the voice of the Spirit. 
Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in our hearts, Lord. We look to you. We surrender ourselves to you. Jesus, most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Indeed, there's a lot that is happening. No, we have just ended the first quarter of the year, right? January, February, March passed. Um, I trust that some of us took some time away to refresh and recharge for the second quarter. I have the same as well for the church revival, right? It's a new season, it's, it's a new era that's dawning upon the disciples. Because Christ came, Christ has died, and Christ has resurrected. And now they're facing a new era, a new time. What are they going to do? And in line with the Bible, our church is going to launch into the book of Acts. The book of Acts will be covering 16 sermons on the book of Acts, chapter 1 to chapter 12. If you're still deciding to, you know, what you want to read for your you know, Bible study, the book of Acts is a good place to start. Amen. And what you'll find in the book of Acts is that it's a historical narrative of what happened in the early church. Right? And with historical narrative, it's not like the book of Romans or, you know, where you have to wrestle through some theological teachings. Often, we have to slow ourselves down to understand the historical narratives. We have to slow ourselves down. We have to ponder through what is happening in this story. What is, the, what is the story behind the story? What is the historical, what is the social context that's happening? What does it mean for us you know, when we're reading these stories? And that's what we're going to do. That's what I'm going to do this morning. We're going to look at Acts chapter 1, verse 1 to 12. And the title of our message this morning is Spirit-Empowered Disciples. Spirit-Empowered Disciples. Can you say it with me? spirit empowered disciples. Right, the password in today's society right, is AI-powered. Right? It's every company you know, is trying to get their products or their, their service to be AI-powered. Google announced last year that you know, the Google Maps that, that we use, how many of you use Google Maps? Use Google Maps, right? Google Maps is going to be AI powered as well. The next slide, you see that that's the usual to the left, left of your screen. That's the usual Google map. And to your right, that's the one that they're launching in the States now. And I'm pretty sure it'll be rolled out in a matter of time throughout the rest of the world. So in this AI powered Google map, you key in the direction and it gives you not just the 2D directions, but you know, it's an immersive experience. It brings you in. At the click of an icon, it takes you into the map, providing the live images, showing you the trees and the plants. It even predicts the traffic that's going to happen that, you know, when you're there and the weather conditions as well. You know, like AI technology, right, is slowly but surely changing the way we live and experience our life. In the same way, brothers and sisters and friends, the Spirit of God empowers us to become Spirit-empowered disciples. Being a Christian without the Spirit is like having a smartphone without the charger. Right? Sooner or later, the smartphone without a charger becomes a glorified paperweight. Right? As we are disciples of Christ, Brothers and sisters, we want to be empowered by the Spirit. Amen? And here's what Jesus has to say about the Spirit in John 16, verse 7. And I want to highlight what's written in verse 12 to 15. In verse 7, it says that, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. If I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And in verse 12, he says that, I have so many things I want to tell you. There's so many things more to share. But when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. 
He will not speak on his own authority, but when he comes, whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you, all that the Father has in mind. Therefore, I said that I'll take, he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Spirit of the Lord is speaking into your hearts. Spirit of the Lord is moving in your hearts. He's ministering to your hearts. He knows what you need and He is ministering to you. So guide us to all the truth about God, all the things that we need to know, all the thoughts that we wrestle with. Spirit of God reveals that to us. Spirit of God proclaims the future, right? Like one Karen shared during worship. There's the earthquake, there's all these tsunamis, there's different things that are happening, but it's the Spirit of God in us that will guide us into the future. And the Spirit of God reveals the goodness of God in our life. Amen. I'm just so glad that I live in this age, right, where I have the Bible, I have the Spirit of the Lord in me. I'm not in the Old Testament. Thank God for those guys in the Old Testament, but I'm glad I'm in the New Testament. Amen. I have the Spirit accompanying me, counselling me, teaching me about the truth of God. So this morning, you know, the question for us that I want to lead us into is how can we, you know, become Spirit-empowered, right? And as I meditate upon the Scriptures in Acts chapter 1, verse 3 to 8 specifically, what really stands out to me is the Kingdom of God. What really stood out to me, the whole thing, it's about the kingdom of God. Help me tell your neighbor, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. You know, this Acts 1, you see like what I've shared earlier, before this, disciples have encountered Jesus, listened to Him, they've witnessed Him performing miracles, signs and wonders, seen His resurrection, have been touched by Him. And now in this dawn of the new age, in this new season, there's one thing that they need to be convinced of. It's the kingdom of God. There's one thing that you and I, this morning, we need to be convinced of. It's the kingdom of God. It's the coming of the kingdom of God. It's that the kingdom of God is here, and the kingdom of God is in your hearts. It's moving in your hearts. It's expanding. It's working in your hearts. That's what we need to grab hold of this morning. Kingdom of God is here. Let us read the scripture in Acts 1, 3 to 8. Presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proof, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water but you will be baptized with the Spirit not many days from now. And when they had come together, they asked Him. The disciples asked the Lord, Lord, when will this time be restored to the kingdom of to Israel? And He said to them, It's not for you to know the times or season that the Father has fixed by His own authority. Verse 8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The kingdom of God is coming. The kingdom of God is coming through the Spirit, through the disciples. You see, it really stands out to me in verse 3, when Jesus appeared to the disciples, right, for 40 days after His, his resurrection. All He talked to them about is the kingdom of God. That's why I make no apology. This morning, brothers and sisters, my first point is, Surrender to the kingdom of God. The surrender to the kingdom of God. That's the heart, the core message of Jesus Christ. Yes, He spoke a lot of uh, uh, parables in regards to money, but the most number of conversations when you have your disciples, with people, He talks about the kingdom of God. Right? Because God knows, Jesus knows that once He's gone, once He's up, ascended to heaven in Acts 1, right? It's disciples empowered by the Spirit to continue the great work, to 
to advance the kingdom of God. And what we're called to do, brothers and sisters and friends, is to surrender. Surrender to the kingdom of God. And it's not easy. It's not easy, right? Because well, what is the kingdom of God? Right? And I'm sure if you read the Gospels, you can understand the different things about the kingdom of God. It's the coming of God, the coming of His kingdom, that His rule, His reign being established here on earth through us. But let me share with you some stories about the disciples. Right? In John 20, we have the doubtful Thomas. Right? Thomas did not believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You read John chapter 20. He says it explicitly. He has to see the mark of the nails in the hands of Jesus. He needs to physically examine those marks for him to believe. And brothers and sisters, out of the love of Christ, that's exactly what Jesus did. He appeared to him eight days later. and said, come Thomas, come and examine my hands. Come and see these marks that I have bore for you. Doubtful Thomas believed then in the resurrection. And look at John chapter 21. Peter, the betrayal, right? The disciple who betrayed Jesus, not once, twice, but three times, right? And after he betrayed Jesus, after the death of Jesus, he moved back to his old trade, fishing. Right? How tempting is it for us to experience Easter, to experience God as our Savior, and then we move back to our old habits, to the old ways. That's exactly what Peter did. But God loved Peter so much, just as how He loved each and every one of us here so much, that Jesus appeared to Peter when He was fishing to affirm Peter. If you're in this room or you're watching online, you ever felt like a hypocrite, I want to assure you that you're not alone. I want to assure you that you're not beyond the redemption of the grace of God. You see it in the lives of the disciples. As they wrestled with their faith, God came near. Jesus came near to address that specific doubt, that specific struggle that they have in their hearts. That's one thing that is clear for us is that God doesn't just want a piece of your heart, but God wants the whole of your heart. Amen? He doesn't just want you to obey Him to come to church on Sunday. He doesn't just want you to, to, to pray to Him three times a day, but He wants your whole heart. He wants your whole heart. I think it's the next slide. I think there's the... About that. Thank you, PA team. Wholeness of your heart. You know, I think most of us, I mean, all of us would be carrying a passport, right? If not, um, please let me know. I will pray for you. <laughs> but I have an Australian passport that I'm proud of, right? It shows that I'm a citizen of this country. You know, and if I'm overseas and if war broke out, um, I'll shelter myself in the Australian embassy and Qantas will come to help me, right? <laughs> Fly me out. Praise the Lord. For Qantas, okay. It's not easy for me to attain this passport, right? You know, for me, I have to go through tests, I have to go through interviews, I have to spend thousands of dollars to attain the PR, and then a couple of months later, you know, I can apply for the citizenship. And in the midst of that, I surrender my Indonesian passport to become, you know, Australian citizen. So we confess our faith to Jesus Christ we become citizens of God's kingdom. And it is the most powerful citizenship across the universe. All right? Because this citizenship helps us to cross from death to life. And this citizenship helps us to usher in what's in the heaven down to earth. Makes us co-heirs with Christ makes us access our Heavenly Father, helps us, you know, to 
gain all these spiritual gifts, advance His kingdom here. Let's read Matthew 19, verse 16 to 24. We have a rich young man, right, who wants to come into the kingdom of God. And he comes to Jesus. He says, Jesus, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus said to him, right, Obey all this, shall not murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't bear false witness, honour your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbour as yourself. And the young man said to him, that All of this I have kept, what do I still lack? And Jesus said to him, you know, Be perfect, go and sell what you possess and give to the poor, and then you have treasure in heaven, and then come and follow me. When a young man heard of this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus turned to the disciples, and I say to you, it's difficult for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. And I tell you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. That's why the surrender is so important. Surrender to the kingdom of heaven. Right? There's nothing unbiblical about stewarding the wealth that God has given us. It's only unbiblical when we hold on to the earthly treasures greater than the kingdom of heaven. Again, brothers and sisters, listen to the word of God. In Matthew 13, 44 to 46, it says that, Kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man is found and cover up. And then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has to buy the field. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who, on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. The emphasis of these illustrations is not so much about attaining the kingdom of heaven, but emphasis of these scriptures, it's about the hefty price, that the price has to be paid to enter, to attain the kingdom of heaven. There are so many teachings that I can share with you. We can, we can perhaps do a conference on the topic of kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. But this is the crux of it. Surrender to the kingdom of heaven. Surrender to the kingdom of God. There has to be a price. There has the price that has to be paid to enter in the kingdom of God. What is the price that God is asking you this morning to surrender? What is the price that God is asking you to pay this morning? Enter into the kingdom of God. Surrender to His kingdom. Because there's a powerful promise awaiting us. In John 14, 12 to 14, it says that whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these he will do because I'm going to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do that my Father will be glorified in the Son. Ask me anything in my name, I will do it. That you and I carry that promise in us to do the greater, greater works than what Jesus has done on earth. But first, we have to pay the price. We have to surrender to the kingdom of God. We have to let go of what we have in our hands and in our hearts so that we can hold on to the kingdom of God. And the surrender is not a once-off surrender. The surrender is every day, every hour, every Sunday. He said, God, I surrender. God, I give to you. God, let your agenda, let your kingdom be the first. Isn't that what is said in the Lord's Prayer? Lord, let, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. It's your will, not my will. That is that very first step this morning. And I believe, I believe wholeheartedly, as the Lord is alive, as the Lord moves, some of us need to surrender to the kingdom of God this morning. Say, God, I want your kingdom. I do not want what the devil offers in the kingdom of this earth, but I want to usher in your kingdom. Lord, I surrender it unto you. Amen? 
So be spirit-empowered disciples, first thing is surrender. Surrender to the kingdom of God. Second thing, advance the kingdom of God. Advance the kingdom of God. In Acts chapter 1, verse 6 to 8, come together, they ask him, Lord, when will the time be restored to the kingdom of Israel? You see, the disciples are sometimes like you and me, right? They, they don't want to do the job. They say that, God, just come. Just come back and then that's it. We all go heaven. But God says, no, you need to wait. God says, no, you need to be here on earth to do the work of mine. It's not just by our own strength. In verse 8, he says that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. You are witnesses in Jer Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And that's where the disciples started. They were in Jerusalem. They went to the neighboring countries in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And they were told to wait. Right? But the instructions were clear. The promise is clear. The power is to come. The Spirit is going to fill the disciples. The Spirit is filling you right now. The Spirit is, is moving in you right now. The Spirit is giving you power. But let me make it clear to us, right? It says here we are called to be witnesses to the ends of the earth. Maybe some of us, we understand the terms witness according to the modern court systems. Right, when you are a witness, you know, I'm watching Suits recently. Anyone who watched Suits? Season 1 to Season 9, just one few years. It's been a while, but yeah, I'm, I'm catching up. <laughs> in the court system, a witness, you're put in a box, right? And then you relay information to the court, right? The lawyer asks you a question and you relay that information. We some of us understand, right, that a witness, you, you testify to what you've seen and what you've heard, which is correct. But did you know that in the Greek word, no, for witness is martis, M-A-R-T-Y-S, which is how we derive the English word martyr. As one persecuted, even facing death for the belief. Whew, right, wow. That's what you and I are called to do, to be a witness of Jesus Christ. That's what exactly it means to be prepared to face persecution, be prepared to face even death as you carry the cross. Whoa. But comes the power in this very same verse as well. Power of the Spirit. And this power, the Greek word, you know, here it means dunamis. Dunamis. That's where we get the word dynamite from. It also means miraculous power. It also means signs and wonders. Brothers and sisters, when the Spirit comes upon you, there's power, there's signs, there's wonders, there's miracles that come upon you. And that's the promise of the Bible, of God, that you will be witness for me to the ends of the earth, but no, my power will be with you as well. It's not on your own strength, not on your own wisdom, but you will be filled. You will be followed with signs and wonders and miracles. Amen? Brothers and sisters and friends, the advancement of the kingdom of God is not a soft and spineless process. It requires strong will and determination. It comes from the power of the Spirit. That is why first is for us to surrender to the kingdom of God. We need to let whatever that holds us back let it go to the kingdom of God, then we can take up the calling to advance the kingdom. It's not going to be easy, but the promise of the Spirit, it's clear for all of us to experience. And we are blessed to be part of this church, right? We are part of the Hope International Ministry movement of churches. Right? We all believe in this exact verse that we all will be the power, filled with the power of spirit to, to be witnesses to God to the ends of the earth. The first church was planted in Thailand in 1981. And today, the HIM churches, we cover 700 locations across 38 countries. This church 
this movement of churches believes in the power of the Spirit. And two weeks from now, you'll be hearing from Pastor Simon, right? And I just want to put a bit of spotlight on him because I'm not just talking something that happens in the Bible, but talking about a real person who's filled with the Spirit that you and I get to hear from in two weeks from now. Right? The next slide, you'll see that Pastor Simon, um, that's him on, the, on your left, and that's the recent picture of him. And Pastor Simon graduated from civil engineering in Monash in 1980s. You know, and back then, he was a key student leader in a Waverly Christian Fellowship, also known as the City Life Church. And that's a photo of him doing some work. You know, if you go to City Life Church, if you look at the original building that they have, when they first purchased it in the 1980s, Pastor Simon was there as a young man, you know, doing some work to the church. And I got this photo from City Life website, right? Chapter 1, the very beginning of their church history. I'm not sure whether he'd be pleased with me showing him half naked, but you can ask him two weeks later. But Pastor Simon continues to be filled with the Spirit, right? Like decades later, right? Even after he, he, he's finished his, his tenure as a president of our movement, he continued to make disciples, continued to impact nations, continued to travel across countries to touch life, to make disciples, to mentor people such as myself. Right? It's that Spirit of God that is burning. It's Spirit-filled. Someone who understands. Right? Even when he was a general manager in Kuala Lumpur, he was pioneering a church there. And when the church was planted, yes, he wants to go to Kuching to start a church there as well, raise family. He's done all that. He's achieved all this earthly success, but his mind has always been about the kingdom of God. It's always been about the kingdom of God. How can I advance the kingdom of God? How can I grow His church? How can I let His truth and His power be made known to the rest of the world? Brothers and sisters, God has placed you and I specifically in our neighbourhood, in our workplaces, in our schools, Right? for such a time as this, for such a time when the power of the Spirit can come through you to touch your neighbours, to touch your colleagues, to touch your friends, to such a time as this. Whatever it is that's on your mind about your colleagues and your neighbours, maybe you have not so good thoughts about them, but this morning I declare that the power of the Spirit can come upon you that miracles and signs and wonders can come through your life to advance the kingdom of God, to advance the work of Christ in you and touching all these different places God has placed you in. And as a pastor of this church, you know, as Hope Melbourne, Notting Hill, our Jerusalem is Notting Hill. It doesn't need... Rocket science will figure that out, right? We're planted here. God, in His grace, raised the funds, moved us from Brentwood College to here, in Notting Hill, so that we can impact, so that we can touch the lives of people here in Notting Hill. We want to advance the kingdom of God in this suburb. And it's been burning in my heart in years. Like, oh man, we need to reach out. We need to do more you know, to reach the lives of, of people for Jesus. You know, late last year, it's come to my attention that there's a Notting Hill neighbourhood house. And then two months ago, Alex added me into the WhatsApp community group. Right? And then from the messages that come through the WhatsApp group, I got to know that they actually give out bread and you know, every 12 o'clock on Thursday, they will serve soup as well to the neighbourhood. So last Thursday, you know, I pluck up my courage and say, okay, I'm just going to go, right? And uh, I did buy some um, hot cross buns, which all of us enjoyed last Sunday. So I actually took a box of that, uh, 24 of them, and took them with me. Right? I came bearing gift of buns. 
right? In case they don't like me, at least, you know, the buns are there to cushion it. But to my surprise, right, when, when, I, re- when I reached there, I met Lucas and Embry, right? And Lucas is a retiree and he worships at Clayton Church of Christ. And he's been volunteering there for several years. He runs the food bank and the bread run. His wife, Olivia, runs the English class, right? And he said to me, Freddy, two weeks ago, Brie was appointed the manager of the centre. And Brie herself is a pastor of a local church in Mount Waverley. And Brie herself runs playgroups on a weekly basis at the neighbourhood house as well. And Lucas said to me, Freddy, if it was three weeks ago you came, I'll tell you that it's hard to evangelise. But no, he said, now is the time. This is a perfect opportunity. This is a mission ground for us to share the gospel and to show love to the neighbours. And you imagine that in that one hour visit, I was just so blown away because I did not expect to meet any Christians, let alone Christians who are on fire for God. So I'll continue to be the spy for this church. I'll go every month once or twice on Thursday afternoons, I'm going to commit myself to, to be there at the, at the soup event, talk to people, loving people, and then I'll invite you to join me. <laughs> In one way or another, as a church, we'll go out to reach out to touch the people of Notting Hill. Amen? Amen? And I was hesitant. I was... I wasn't confident. I just have this conviction in me that Notting Hill is our Jerusalem. And that God has planted us here in this very suburb to advance His kingdom. So, brothers and sisters and friends, where is your Jerusalem? Where is your Judea and Samaria? How can you make an impact for the kingdom of God. It could be some little seed that you can sow. It could just be going across your house tonight to say hi to your neighbour. It could be walking down the office aisle and make peace with a colleague who have hurt you. I don't know what it is that the Spirit has placed in your heart, but the kingdom of God is here. Amen? The kingdom of God is here. And we need to get on board with it because we want to be filled with the Spirit and the power. I invite the worship team to come as I conclude my message. Just encourage us from the Word of Lord. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 31, It says, Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. Let's just put aside everything and let's rise to our feet and just let's just surrender to the kingdom of God the Lord can advance his kingdom without you but the Lord won't because the Lord wants you to experience his spirit his power his miracles his signs and wonders the Lord wants you to be a living stone for Him. Would you say yes to God and His kingdom? The Lord understands your fears, your concerns, your weakness. But the Lord is still knocking on the door of your hearts. Would you surrender? Would you surrender to my kingdom? And some of you here, you are ready. 
You've been around long enough. You have the knowledge, you have the skills, you have the resources. But you just need the tug of the Spirit. And I tell you, the tug of the Spirit is here. Spirit is tugging your heart. You can do something to advance the kingdom of God. I don't care whether it is doing through this church, it doesn't matter. The kingdom of God is so wide, so big. Just obey the Spirit of God. As I was preparing the Word, I have a vision of a potted plant, small potted plant. And in that vision, God says that this potted plant is like how some of us are living right now. We are alive, we are thriving in God, but we are not growing because the pot limits our growth. And the following vision, there's a big pot, the bigger pot, with good soil, with good nutrients, fertilizers. The Lord says, I'm going to transplant you from the small pot to the bigger pot. But first, you need to break the small pot. You need to break it. If not, I can't put you into the bigger pot. Brothers and sisters and friends, I believe with my heart that God wants to expand your mind. God wants to enlarge your heart. And God wants to pour out His Spirit upon you. In this very moment, if we just surrender to God and His kingdom and say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Use me. Use me. Let's worship Him. Give Him all the glory. Amen. Let's take that song one last time. One last time. And I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the wind
Lord Jesus, we declare today that we are yours and forever we are. We bring this service to a close, but before we do that, Lord Jesus, we ask that your goodness and mercy should be upon every one of us and we go out with joy, with grace in this week. And your presence, O oh Lord, will not depart from everyone. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. For those of you online, thank you for worshiping with us. I just want to make a call as well. Um, surrender to the kingdom of God. If you know the Spirit moves in you and, and you want to surrender yourself to the kingdom of God, please come forward and, and let me pray for you. Please come forward if you need prayers. And for those of you here, thank you for worshiping with us. See you next Sunday. God bless you all.